Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Our topic today will be the IRS 31 Pro UMB, the new generation of our passive road sensors. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Manuel Kreisig and I am working now at Luft for 15 years in the service and support department. Uh, maybe you have further questions after the webinar, so you will also see my email address here and you can of course send me some uh, questions if you want. Anyway, we will have some questions during the webinar. Therefore, we have a question box on the right side for you where you can enter all the questions you want to uh, to uh, give to me, right? So, you see, for questions, please use the question function. We will gladly answer all your questions. So, the topics for today are the presentation of the sensor itself. Uh, I want to show you the competitive compatibility mode for the IRS 31, the coupling between the IRS 31 and 31 Pro and the IRS 31 Pro, the new protocol SDI 12 implementation and of course the configuration of the sensor itself. Oh, there is the first question here. How can we record this webinar? You don't need, you do not need to record it. It will be recorded automatically and we will present that to you um, after the webinar. You can um, have access via uh, YouTube, I think, and uh, see the webinar anyway. Okay, you do not need to record it by yourself. Okay, let's go on. So, firstly, first I want to show you three different uh, road sensors. Maybe you know them, maybe you're not. So, they are, all of them are different. and that are, let's say, the complete history of the um, Luft road sensors here. And so, if you do not know it, I will show it now. So, on the left side, it's the IRS 31 UMB. You see that the surfaces are different, right? And I will, of course, explain what happens on the surface or on, with the, on the surface of the IRS 31 Pro itself. So, you see on the left side the IRS 31. In the middle, you see the new IRS 31 Pro UMB. And on the right side, you see the active road sensor, which is the RS31 or RS31 Pro UMB. For your information, the left one, the RS31 Pro, is not available anymore. So, you cannot get this anymore. You will always get the RS31 Pro now. So, if you are in front of the station and you do not really know what type of sensor is installed, you will also be able to check that with the serial number placed on the surface. On the left side, for the IRS 31, you always see only the serial number. Uh, for the IRS 31 Pro in the middle, you will also see a B before the serial number and for the RS 31, you will see an A before the serial number. So, that's also an indication which type of sensor is installed on the road. Differences. So, what are the differences to the IRS 31 itself? So, first we have changed the temperature accuracy. That means now we will be able between minus 20 degrees and 20 degrees to give you an accuracy of plus minus 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. For all the other temperatures above or under minus 20 degrees and 20 degrees, it's plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. So, if you remember the IRS 31 was the accuracy was 0 0.2 degrees Celsius for the complete range. The second thing is an improved measurement of the freezing temperature. We have a new, let's say, uh, uh, electronic part to measure the, the saline concentration and freezing temperature and so we have, of course, an improved measurement of that. I will show you anyway later how it works. So, then we have a modified road condition model. So, that means the road, co road condition model of the IRS 31 is not compatible to this new road condition model of the IRS 31 Pro. I will also show you that later. Then we have a new value which is called friction. Also, friction is a very uh, famous uh, value now for road sensors and so we have implemented the friction also as a special channel. And, of course, the last thing is the SDI-12 protocol, which will be available from Eastern, from Easter 2040. 
So the installation, I think nothing changed here. So normally you will have a UMB station, and uh, that means you will have a cabinet on the pole, you will have all the single um, sensors or the WS sensors installed at the pole and then you will have to install the IRS31 Pro in the road. So it is still inside the road, you have to cut the road and or you have to place the sensor inside the road and of course then install the cable inside the cabinet. Then you will be able with a communication module like a GPS modem or maybe also a server to transfer the data from the station, from the cabinet to the PC. So, uh, the connection, okay, the, because the IRS31 Pro is still a standard UMB sensor, of course the connection is the same like the IRS31 and for all other UMB sensors too. So normally you will have four wires, a brown wire which is plus 12 volt and you see it's 12 volt here. So it's the same uh, voltage, power supply voltage like for the IRS31, not 24 volt. It's the, the only sensor with the IRS31 which will be supplied with 12 volt. That's very important here. Then white is the ground wire, then we have the two communication wires which is green RS485A and yellow RS485B. Normally you will connect that to an Isocon. Isocon is very important here because um, the Isocon provides also the galvanic uh, separation, isolation and so it, normally you should use an Isocon here to get the galvanic isolation between the different wires. And of course then you have to power up the Isocon and then you will be able to connect some um, some master, UMB master like a PC or EAK um, as a communicator and so you will be able to communicate with the station or with the sensor. Now about the measurements. We have three really measured measurements or values on, on the surface of the IRS31 Pro itself. So you will see different positions of the uh, measurement. Let's start on the right side with the surface temperature. You will see there is a small uh, metal pin there. I will show you that live now. So here is the live picture. And if you talk about a temperature measurement, the temperature measurement is placed here. So you have a metal pin and under the metal pin we have an NTC uh, resistor which will be able to measure the um, temperature, surface temperature on top of the, on the road. So that's the first measurement here. Then on the right side now we have the salt concentration measurement and that's this new uh, sensor element I told you. You will see it's, uh, these are also two small electrodes. They are made of gold. Yes, I will also switch back to the live picture and it's placed here and these three screws are only to, oh sorry, their three uh, pick, um, screws are only used to fix the element on the surface. So, but inside here we have the two electrode elements, they are made of gold. So because we have made some tests and with the gold material we will be able to measure the best way the conductivity. Because we do measure the conductivity here and with the conductivity measurement we will be able to uh, give you the information about the saline concentration. Now because it is a passive measurement you have to know that of course this measurement is uh, optimized for a special salt. It's optimized for natrium chloride. So you all normally can only use natrium chloride um, to be measured with the IRS31 Pro passive road sensor. If you use another salt, of course, you will also get a change of the conductivity. But because the natrium chloride curves and diagrams are um, programmed, you will get the wrong output at the end. Okay, you need to know that. Um, and the last measurement, you see it um, below, is the water film head. And you see nothing because it's a white surface. And in reality, i show you again the the live picture, maybe you can see that, that you have a dark shadow here, right? Here there is a dark shadow behind the surface and that's the radar sensor itself. And that's the same sensor we use also with the IRS31. We have not changed this measurement because we have 
we made very good experiences with that, so we had no need to change that. And so it's the same sensor element like with the IRS 31. And with this we will be able to measure the water film height. In addition, with these real measured values, you will get also some addition no sorry, some additional uh, values. You see that on the left corner, you will also get a freezing point, you will also get a road condition, you will also get a friction and you will also get the ice percentage based on these three measurements. I will show you later how they will be uh, measured and let's say calculated. So we will start with the temperature measurement itself. Normally we have three temperature measurements depending on the version of the road sensor you will get. So we have on the surface our, you see that on the left side here, our NTC surface temperature measurement element and NTC means negative temperature coefficient. That means that's a resistor, right? And this resistor has a value and if the temperature goes up, the value of the resistor goes down and the other way around. So, and I show you the small table of this resistor. So, it's zero degree, you see that the output of the resistor is about 60,320 ohms. And so, if you go down, the, the value will increase and if you go uh, up, the uh, value will decrease. Normally, it's, it's a 5kA resistor, that means at 24, 5 degrees, the output is 5,000 ohms. Then you also see uh, that we have two external temperature sensors, right? External temperature 1 and external temperature 2. Normally, if you want to install them in the soil, the external temperature 1 will be used for 5 centimeters depth and the external temperature 2 for 30 centimeters of depth. Normally, if you do that, everything be, will be shown the right way also on the software side. But sometimes it happens that the people install it the other way around. So that means that, of course, the values are completely mixed. And on the software side, then, you will see the external one, which normally is 5 centimeters, with a, but in reality it's a 30 centimeter depth. So it's, it's the wrong value anyway. And in the past, you had to drive to the to the station, you had to open the road sensor and you had to change the wires so that it will be uh, correct again. Now with the new IRS 31 Pro and the UMB config tool, you will be able to do that on the software side. You see that there will be a command called swap channel assignment for external temperature sensor and if you, you, if to, you do that, then you will see that the external values will be changed. And so you do not need to drive outside anymore and change them really mechanically. Alright, I hope that's understandable. Um, for the measurement range, we have a measurement range for uh, um, temperature between minus 30 degrees Celsius up to 80 degrees Celsius. The accuracy is, I told you that, it's plus minus 0, uh, 0 0.1.1 degrees Celsius between minus 20 and 20 degrees, otherwise plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. The units for these measurements are Celsius degrees, Celsius Fahrenheit and the norm value. So the next measurement is the water film. So I told you that the water film measurement is done with a microwave rudder sensor which is under the surface in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the sensor. Uh, the measurement range, it's still the same like the IRS 31, so we have also the same technical specifications here. We have the measurement range between 0 and 4000 micrometers. We have an accuracy of 0 or 2 millimeters up to 3 millimeters, better than plus minus 30 percent. And units, micrometers, mil, norm value. So, the third measurement is the salt concentration measurement and I told you also that, that this is done with the two gold electrodes here in the middle and normally you will put or the, the salt, the mixture of salt and water will be placed there and then we can 
measure the conductivity. With the conductivity measurement, we will be able to calculate uh, and give you the information about the saline concentration. There are some restrictions. You see that? There is a note here. If the surface temperature is lower or equal to 4 degrees, the measurement only will give you values. And if the water film is minimum 30 micrometers or more, then you will get the value. So that's important to know because if you want to test the sensor in the field and you have an outside temperature of, of 10 degrees, for example, or 15 degrees, you will not get a value for the salt concentration measurement and of course also not for the freezing point because it's based on this measurement. That means you have to know that, right? The reason for that, the reason for that is simple because the measurement itself is depending on the temperature. That means we will do an adjustment of this measurement um, at about zero degrees Celsius temperature. And if you go up with the outside temperature, the value will change automatically because um, it's depending on the temperature again. And so if you want to do a test, you can, of course, change this T uh, lower than 4 degrees, but at the end, if you do the test, the, the, the values which you will get are not inside the specification anymore. You have to know that. So the measurement range is between 0 and 100 gram per square meters, and the units are uh, percent, gram per square meters, pounds, and PI mile. PL mile, sorry. Um, yeah, that's it. So these are the real measured values. Now we, I want to show you the combined values which you will get. For example, the ice percentage. The ice percentage measurement or value is calculated with the information of the surface temperature and the salt concentration. With these two values, we will, we will be able to give you the information about the ice percentage. That means how much ice is in the fluid in the material on the road. And of course the measurement range is between 0 and 100 percent and the unit is percent. Then we have the friction. Also the friction is a mixed value so we need three different single measurements for, for that. It's the ice percentage, it's the surface temperature and it's the water film height. The combination of these three with a special formula, um, the measurement, uh, or you, that means then with these three measurements or with these three values you will be able to get the friction. The friction range is between 0 and 1. There is no unit for that. I will try to explain what it means. So if the friction is 0, then there is no friction anymore between the tire and the surface. So it's very, very slippery. If you have a real good friction, so the tire connection between the road and the tire itself is perfect, then the output should be 1. In reality, you will not get a value 0 or 1, because these are optimal values which, are not, which you will not get with a tire and a road. So normally, for example, the, the most slippery value will be about 0 or 2, and if you get 0.2, that means really that you have real ice on the surface. So there is no friction anymore. And for the, for the best friction, you will normally get about 0.9, which means that you, have, that you will have the optimal connection between the tire and the road. Okay? So now we will also have the road condition model here. Also, the road condition model is a, let's say, it's a value which is based on three single measurements. The measurements are surface temperature, water film height, and freezing temperature. With this free information, we will be able to generate the road condition. And you have to differ between two sections. We have the road conditions above or equal to 1.5 degrees Celsius and we have the road conditions lower than 1.5 degrees Celsius. If we look on the left side, on the road conditions higher than 1.5 or equal the Celsius degree, we get dry, most moist and wet, right? Um, for the road conditions lower than uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius, you will get dry, of course, 
moist with salt because if it's lower than 1.5 degrees and it's moist there must be something on the road some chemicals or some salt so that's the reason why you will get moist with salt and of course also wet with salt um, for both sides the the threshold for dry moist and wet is is um, adjustable the standard um, configuration for the loft the road condition model is between the 0 and 29 micrometers you will get dry from 30 micrometers up to 199 micrometers you will get moist and 200 and more you will get wet it, this is the standard configuration but of course it's adjustable and at the end if uh, you will also get ice as a road condition. Here, uh, this sheet shows you the same thing again. You will have a diagram with the temperatures. Um, FT means freezing point temperature, ST means surface temperature, and you see the border in the middle, which is the 1.5 border um, for. Uh, the border between ice and moist with salt and wet with salt. So there's nothing else than this what I explained before but the more important thing is the coding on the right, right side. So this is the coding which you will get from the IRS 31 Pro if you request the road condition channel. So that means for example it's different to the IRS 31 you will get the code 10 which is dry you see the water film height must be lower than 30 micrometers then you will get this road condition. You will get the code 15 which is moist again if the water film is higher than 30 micrometers or equal or lower than 200 mic micrometers you will get moist code 15 then code 20 which is wet so 200 or more water film height and then you can, will get also 25 moist with salt 30 wet with salt and 35 ice and you see these uh, codes are black and we have also two gray codes which is 40 snow and 45 frost. That means these are not implemented yet. So you cannot get them now, but in the future we will implement them. We are now testing this. The problem here is that the, the difference between ice, snow and frost is so small that we need to do a lot of tests before we can implement that with a high quality. So at the end, with a firmware update in the future, you will also get this two additional road conditions. We are still testing it and if we are ready then we will implement that. That means 40 for snow and 45 for frost. So the situation now you will always get 45 ice if it's snow or ice or frost. So questions until now. So we have some the first question is, you have wrong label for 5 cm and 30 cm deep. Really? I have to check that. Uh, I think maybe you talk about IRS 31, right? And not 31 Pro. I have to check that because now we have um, labeled it like this. So this is the actual situation. Maybe it was wrong in the future, uh, in the past, but now it is like this. Okay? Anyway, if it's not like this, I will, I will check it. No problem. So you said that Isocon was very important since it's uh, isolated sensors from other wires, yes. Does it mean that Isocon is mandatory? No, the Isocon is not mandatory, but if you do not use the Isocon, you have to use another galvanic isolation module, therefore. If you do not use that, you will not get a warranty if there is a problem, because the galvanic isolation is, is mandatory, not the Isocon. That's really important. Galvanic isolation for the road sensors is mandatory. How you do that, that's your thing, but we can give you an isocon for that. So, um, this is a change to IRS 31 for the, yes, the temperature threshold and the water film height lower than 30 degrees and the temperature threshold of lower than 40 degrees, it's not, it's not a change, but we now uh, uh, cut it. And we have not cut it with the IRS 31, uh, 31. 
it was the same thing because the measurement is always the same. Conductivity is not a Luft measurement. Conductivity is a standard measurement. But conductivity measurement is depending on the temperature. And what is what was uh, the problem with the IRS 31 is if you do the test at let's say 15 degrees or 25 degrees, you will also get not accurate values. And now we have cut it because normally uh, you don't need to get a freezing point or a saline concentration if the temperature is higher than 4 degrees. Why? You want to get this value because of winter time and then we have the problem on the road, not at 25 degrees plus. So that's the reason why we have changed that. So, yeah, galvanic isolation on both. Yeah, that's of course both. Uh, the galvanic isolation means that you you isolate the communication wires uh, um, against the power supply wires. That's what the isocon does. So the isolation between communication wires and power supply wires. That's the main thing here. Okay. Are the road conditions still on the channel 902 as it was for IRS 31? Um, no. There are different channels now. And that's the reason why the IRS 31 is not compatible with the IRS 31 Pro. So, but I will show you later how to solve this one, okay? Because we have this compati compatibility mode. And that's the reason why we have implemented the compatibility mode, right? So, it's not, you have to know that the channels are different to the channels of the IRS 31. So, the IRS 31 Pro is a new UMB sensor has nothing to do with the IRS 31. It's a new sensor. It's a, new, it's a completely new development. So if you replace IRS 31 with IRS 31 Pro, you will need to change coding? No. Again, I will show you how to do that now in a few seconds. Okay, wait a moment and then I will show you what you have to do if you want to replace an IRS 31 with an IRS 31 Pro. So what about replacing old IRS 31 IRS 21 with this sensor. Also this will be solved. You will be able to get a special ISOCON which will emulate the IRS 21 communication interface. So what you need, if you want to replace it, you can do it, but then you have to replace the IRS 31 and you have to add the special ISOCON which emulates the same uh, interface. And then it will be possible, no problem. The IRS 21 and the IRS 31 are not available anymore. You cannot order them anymore. Okay, I think we can go on. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> now, compatibility mode. That's the question about changing from IRS 31 to IRS 31 Pro. Why we have why do we need to have this mode? And it's shown here in the, in the arrow. Again, the IRS 31 Pro is a completely unique sensor. It has nothing to do with the IRS 31. Why? The IRS 31 Pro has his own class ID. They are not compatible to the IRS 31. The IRS 31 Pro will have his own new channels. They are not compatible with the IRS 31 anymore. And the IRS 31 Pro will have his own road condition coding. This is not compatible anymore with the IRS 31. But now, of course, we have some customers who want to change it. Of course, maybe they have to, uh, to install a new one or there are some, several reasons why they have to change it. And for this reason, we have implemented this mode. And this mode means if you activate the compatibility mode in the IRS 31 Pro, after you have programmed that, it will act like an IRS 31. The class ID will change to IRS 31, the channels will be the same like the IRS 31, and the road condition coding will be the same like IRS 31. And now I will show you how you can activate this mode. What you need is the UMB config tool. You need the actual version of the UMB config tool. That's very, very important because only with the actual version you will be able to communicate with the IRS 31 Pro. And the actual version is minimum version 2.1.
which you will which you will be able to get this version on our homepage. And if you have installed it, you can go into the configuration menu of the of the sensor and then under the label sensor settings you will see here Here, the red uh, circle, this is the activation of the compatibility mode. So if you activate this one and you program it, after you have programmed it, it will start up like an IRS 31. And of course, if you want to communicate now, after programming with this sensor, you have to use the IRS 31, not the 31 Pro anymore. Okay? because the class ID has changed. Again, the IRS 31 has the class ID of 1000. The Pro, the class ID of 9000. So that's a complete change. And after programming of the compatibility mode, it will start up with 1000, like the IRS 31. That's the reason for the mode, okay? So, I think that's clear now, hopefully. So it's really easy to, let's say, to replace an existing IRS 31 with an IRS 31 Pro. The only thing you need to do is to activate this mode, right? That's it. Then we have a second thing here. We have also the possibility to couple the IRS 31 Pro with an RS. You see that here on the picture. You have the two uh, nice uh, sensors here. So now maybe you, you, you question yourself, why do I need to couple them together? So that's easy, because the RS31 will have the possibility to measure mixture independent, the freezing point. And so for different applications where you do not use natrium chloride, you have to use the RS31 Pro. And in this case, you will be able to connect these two bow sensors together on the bus side. Now also you are, maybe you ask yourself, huh, why do I need to do that? That's really simple. Because now you will get on the right side, if you have this sensors in the same system, you will get the freezing point and the saline concentration, independent of the mixture from the RS31 Pro. But you need all the other values, right? For, therefore you will have the RS31 Pro on the left side, you will get temperature, you will get um, uh, the friction maybe, and you will get also the road condition. But Remember, the road condition is based also on the freezing point measurement of the IRS, but you do not use natrium chloride. So this calculation is completely wrong, and therefore you need this coupling. That means in this case, the IRS 31 Pro will use the values of the RS to calculate the road condition the right way. And I will show you that here in this little small chart here. So again, you have the request of freezing point channels of the RS 31, right? the constant recording of these values with the IRS31 Pro. So the IRS31 Pro will record these values from the IRS. The IRS31 Pro replaces his freezing point value with the value of the IRS31. And then the last thing, all following calculation, calculations will be performed with the value of the IRS31. And you are, so with this coupling, you will get real good values from both sensors. So, and to enable it, you need again to use the UMB config tool, you need to connect to the sensor and on the menu RS31 Pro UMB freezing temperature, you will be able to activate the freezing temperature mode. You enable it and then it will automatically be coupled with the RS. If maybe you have a station where you have more than one RS, then you need also to address the RS. That means you need to say to the IRS31 Pro which one of the RS you want to connect to the IRS. And therefore, on the right side here, you will be able to enter the ID of the RS which should be used to get the values. Don't forget it. If you only have one, you do not need to change something here. Zero will be okay because automatically if there is only one connected, the, um, the software will know that and the sensor will know that and automatically connect to the, to the single RS. So, 
In addition, with this coupling, we have also created a new channel, which is called status state of coupling. That's the channel 950, and it's a coded channel. You will get three different codes, uh, three different values. You will get the value 1, which means the freezing temperature mode is off. The takeover of RS-31 UMB freezing temperature is disabled in the sensor configuration of the RS-31 Pro. So yeah, now you know that the coupling is not active. With the value 1, you will get the information the freezing temperature mode is switched on, and in the RS, IRS-31 Pro UMB, a valid freezing temperature of the configured RS Pro UMB exists. So that means value 1 says that everything is working the right way. The coupling is activated and the sensor will get the value. And with the value 2, you will get information the freezing temperature mode is switched on and in the IRS-31 Pro UMB exists no valid freezing temperature of the configured RS-31 Pro UMB. So that means that the coupling is activated, but there is a problem with the RS-31. So no, you need to check what happened. Maybe the bus is not connected um, or um, the RS is defective or damaged. So I think that's a good way to check what, what is the actual state of coupling uh, for the sensor. Because in the past we had not the possibility to do that. And it was not always clear what is the state here. Good. So the next point is the SDI-12 protocol. So we will implement that. I told you uh, it's the standardized communication board protocol called Serial Data Interface at 1200 volt. So what does that mean? The sensor will be able to operate in the bus with other SDI-12 devices connected to SDI master. So that means um, we have a lot. We had a lot of requests about road sensors working in SDI-12 because there are a lot of different data loggers or um, terminals which uh, work with this protocol. And so now you will be easily be able to communicate or connect this road sensor to such a master in combination, for example, with a, with a weather station from Luft with a WS station, which is also able to communicate via SDI-12. So you will be able to build up really easy this type of SDI-12 road weather station, if you want. So, also for your information, the board rate for this protocol is fixed. It's 1,200 board, and during the configuration, it will be automatically set to this value. So, the data of uh, via SDI-12 can be transmitted either in metric or US units, so you can configure that, how you want to have the values with which type of unit. If you have the sensor set to SDI-12, you have to know that no communication with the UMB config tool is possible anymore. The reason is easy, because the UMB config tool communicates with UMB binary, but you are using SDI-12 now. So these are two different languages, let's say like this, and so you cannot communicate with the tool anymore. So the, the protocol itself will be ready in, in, in one or two weeks, so it will be available with a further update. You have to check our homepage. Uh, from Easter 2014. So, configuration. I want to show you that live, so I will switch back to the desktop. Wait a moment. Um, so, we will start the UMB config tool here. So, it's really easy. You can go to edit the normal way how to communicate with a UMB sensor. You open the type of sensor box here and you choose the IRS-31 Pro UMB. You add it to the selected sensor list, nothing special here, and now you will be able to configure it. You mark it and then you go to the configure button, load profile from sensor, and that's it. Now you're on the configuration menu here and you will get also an info tab where you will get different information about the sensor itself. The most important information here again is the firmware version. You will see the actual installed firmware version here. It's 1.5. It's the actual version, by the way. So now with the button or the tab IRS31 Pro minus UMB, you will be able to configure the sensor itself. So it's also the same menu like for other UMB sensors. 
You have three different parts. You have on the left side the general properties where you will be able to change the ID of the sensor. Normally you do not need to change the ID. The ID only needs to be changed. It's always the same if you have the same sensor in the same network. If, for example, you have a road weather station where you need to install two road sensors, two of the IRS 31 Pros, then you have to change one to ID2, for example, because you cannot use the same ID twice in a network. That's the reason. If you have three different stations, then you do not need to change the IDs for these three different stations for the IRS 31 Pro. Only if, it, if in the same station you have the same sensors twice or more or often. Of course, then on the right side you have the communication properties again. You can change the line speed, you can change the protocol here. You see you can, now you will be able to change between UMB binary and ASCII. In the future you will be also be able to switch to SDI 12 here, right? Um, and then you have the timeout protocol change. That means after how many minutes the, if you have set the UMB protocol temporary, it will be switched or it will switch back to the kind of real configured uh, protocol here. Then here on the measurement setup, you will have the individual configuration menu for the sensor itself. So in this case, it's an IRS 31 Pro, and you have three little tabs: the sensor settings here where you can change the measurement interval here. The standard um, configuration is 10 seconds. You can choose between 20, 30 and 60 seconds in addition. And you will also be able to set the number of samples. That's a new feature here for the IRS 31 Pro. The IRS 31 Pro will also be able to give you average values. And if you want to get, get this, you have to configure the uh, number of samples for average. In this case, that's the standard configuration, 10 seconds, 6 measurements, that means after 60 seconds you will get an average with 6 samplings or 6 samples, okay? Then we have the swap channel assignment for external temperature sensors box here. I explained that before. You have the compatibility mode checkbox here and you have a correction factor for the freezing temperatures like an offset. You can change that. Here. So then we can go to the model parameters. That means these are the parameters for the road condition models. We have here the limit. Normally this is 1.5. That's a small bug in the software, but it will be uh, in the next version it will be okay. Normally it should stand 1.5 here, but it's um, not displayed in. The, it is 1.5, but the display here is wrong. So in the future you will see 1.5, which is the standard. Uh, threshold for the critical road states. And then you have the temperature limit for the freezing temperature calculations. I told you this is 4 degrees Celsius. You can change them here. Then you have three little tables. On the left side you have the road condition luft thresholds for dry, moist and wet. And you see the threshold for between dry and moist is 30 micrometers. That means between 0 and 29 you will get dry, between 30 and 199 you will get moist and 200 and above you will get wet. These are the thresholds here, you can change that for the condition, road condition loop. For the TLS channels, we have two TLS channels for the road condition which are official uh, channels of the TLS regulation in here in Germany. Uh, you also will be able to change them here. Normally that's maybe not so important for you in this case because these are German special ch uh, German channels here or European channels that say like that. And then we can switch to the RS31 Pro UMB freezing temperature a tab and here you will be able to activate the freezing temperature mode and you will not be able to activate it now because the sensor will now has checked that there is no RS connected and so you will not be able to change it here. Normally if there is an RS connected you will be able to enable this function and then the coupling will be activated. And here on the, on the right side you will be able to change the ideas of the RS which you want to use. So that's it. That's the standard configuration menu. It's nothing special here. Um, we can close that now and switch back to the presentation. 
All right, so that are the same here um, menus on the sheet. I showed you some seconds before. And here is a little small overview about the different products of the IRS 31 Pro UMB. We will have six different versions. The first difference is the cable length. We will have two different cable lengths. We will have 50 meters and 100 meters. You will be able to extend the cables, but not with our standard cable with a standard diameter, which is 0 0.5. So if you want to extend, there is, there is a section in our manual where it is explained how to calculate the diameter of the cable you have to use, and then you will be able to extend the cable also um, for 200 meters or 300 meters, no problem. But for our diameter, we maximum can supply 100 meters. So that's the difference. 50 or 100. And then we have three different versions of each cable length. That means one without external temperature sensors, one version with one external temperature sensor, and one version with two external temperature sensors. So that's the difference, okay? These are the possibilities. At the end you will be able to select between six different versions here. So that's it for today. Maybe you have some questions, please ask them and write them down. I will wait now for us for some seconds here. Okay, so thank you very much for your interest. Oh, there is one question now. When will we get the copy of this seminar? This seminar will be available on the internet again. Yeah, you will be able... So tomorrow you will be able to get it. Please check our homepage and then you will be able to get the webinar tomorrow on our homepage and on YouTube. So thank you very much for your interest again. I hope you get some new information about the IRS 31 Pro. And oh, here's one an additional question. The polling interval is the same as like as it was for the IRS 31. Uh, yes, it is the same. Only the difference is that uh, the the, the standard configuration for the IRS 31 was 60 seconds and the standard configuration for the IRS 31 Pro is now 10 seconds. That's the difference. But uh, all the different um, intervals were the same. Okay, so again, thank you. We will have some additional webinars next week. We will have a webinar for the iBox. So I invite you now to join this webinar. It would be a pleasure for me. Okay? So thank you very much and bye-bye.